So as I alluded to last time, uh, we were on this subject. I visited Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles, and you guys saw hopefully the boa video. If not, you can check that one out. This one's gonna be on Burmese pythons and some of his berm projects from 2022. Uh, you guys have seen some of his stuff before on my channel, hopefully, and definitely on his channel. And don't forget to check below, and uh, there's some links to Jason's information so you can take a look at more of his stuff if you're not familiar. Stay tuned. All right, so if you guys watched the previous video, Jason mentioned we're gonna look at some berms, and so here we are. Uh, we're gonna look at what a clutch that's hatching now. Yeah, we'll look at a clutch that's hatching, but I also wanna show you some babies that are just kind of, they're all fed and they're all ready to go up. I think they are should be on the website now. I don't wanna keep pumping my website, but yeah, just people whatever. are always asking like, where can I find them? So yeah. like jasonsexoticreptiles.com. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description of the videos too. For yeah, some. and I'm not saying buy them from me, just no. showing you stuff. So this is what a clutch looks like after I just made a mess of the eggs. Uh, but we have all kinds of berm babies hatching. I cut these last night because I got anxious. There was obviously there were a couple babies that pipped uh, and I have some pictures of that on my Instagram at some point somewhere, but it's a clutch of ivories, hypos, really pretty hypos, like look at the color on, on this guy here, a girl, I haven't sexed him yet, but uh, she's all covered in vermiculite. I'm gonna probably give them another day to just sit in here. They'll go back in the incubator. I may pull the ones that come out and then we'll, uh, they'll all go into their own cage together, uh, but really, really pretty looking hypos. And what was interesting about this clutch that I wanted to show off at least is if I can find it somewhere, there was no het albino in the male that bred, but I bred two males together and a blizzard popped up, which is an albino. Is that it there? It might be. Nope. Oh no, I'm sorry. Um, a blizzard is in here somewhere. If I can find it, we'll show them off. It's probably gonna be the last one that I, I pull open or was in here, unless just the eye color changed. It's gotta be the one that's hiding its head. But there is a blizzard in here. You just have to take my word for it. And that is basically, um, instead of having black eyes, I don't know if you can see the eyes on this guy. This guy has blackish, you know, bluish black eyes, like a typical ivory. Uh, they have red eyes, because they're albinos, obviously. I wanna find it. <laughs> now it's like personal. Yeah, now I'm like, all right, you're in here. You guys can fast forward through this clip of the video, apparently. I don't know where it is, but it's in here, I promise you. So I'll follow up on a video on that one. But let's go look at some 2021 babies or 2022 babies that are already out. I have no more 2021 babies left. The last couple finally sold. Uh, they tend to sell pretty good across the year. And I think what will be cool on this, uh, let me just move these out of the way. Uh, what I want to show I'm excited already yeah baby berms almost all baby berms will calm down actually yeah. all baby berms will calm down just like any baby snake these are a snake that's born they are big because everything else around them is also big but I thought what was cool is maybe we can show off some Shed. of the babies this girl has actually just been sold in ivory and we can maybe take a look at some normals normals are pretty cool these are babies out of the egg. But what I think is kind of cool is some traits, even though they're heterozygous, which means that they don't show visually, some traits do show visually in babies. So green is one of those. This snake right here is likely het for green or patternless, depending on how you look at it. And uh, what that tends to do is it softens the snake up a little bit. It gives it this kind of a glow. And a lot of people will call it leopard. Uh, Leopard is het green. Some people will call it, I think it's called shatter. What's the one, the het granite that shatters the whole pattern up I a little guess, bit? Yeah, everybody has names yeah, for the they, same stuff. They have names, but if I were to hedge my bets, this one would be the one I'd pick is likely het green over something like this one here. Now, granite does tend to shatter the pattern up a little bit more. These are all possible het green, granite, lab, and albino. So albino also tends to brighten the colors, almost kind of like turns up the highlights. So this one is likely, if, again, if I were to guess, this one is likely het green and het for- Just making sure it couldn't yeah, get on the back side. That poking one's gonna out. move. And I'm not gonna hold them because they all wanna bite me. Uh, baby berms are the I'm worst. Lie. They're all gonna bite me. Yeah. I'm gonna get bit for you, Dan. But maybe they'll be nice to me. I mean, that's just a beautiful snake. I really like Burmese pythons. Uh, they do, as babies, again, they tend to be a little nippy, but they calm down. They're just, 
they're afraid. It's yeah. not, you know, they're just, that's it. They're in a place that everything can eat them. Yeah. At least they're one not. of those snakes, when you go and you're sexing a clutch of berms, you know you're getting whacked a bunch. Like, there's just no question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even taking pictures, it's probably the worst time, or the worst snake to take pictures of is a baby Burmese python. Uh, uh, besides, you know, cobras and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to take pictures of baby cobras. But if that's your thing, you can. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Because they don't, like most snakes want to bite you as like a last resort and they're just like let's do it <laughs> uh, but it would be cool i actually have another clutch that just came out i had five clutches of burmese pythons this year and a couple of them just came out this is these literally just hatched out of the eggs the other day and a bunch of the eggs got really leathery and this is why you would cut the eggs in advance is because sometimes the eggs do get too leathery, especially in artificial incubation, and they can't hatch out. So a lot of people say, let them hatch naturally. I'm all for that, but you have to watch them. This case was a, this guy really wants to borrow. This was a mess up on my part where I wrote 530 and my five looked like a six because I was writing it. So I wasn't really focused on this clutch because it was sitting in there and I thought I had plenty of time. Burmese pythons usually hatch out about a month to, I'm sorry, about 60 to 65 days into their incubation. Uh, the nice thing about this is I believe this is a hypo labyrinth and that would mean that my male and female berms proved for labyrinth, which is something that I've been trying to prove for a while on these. I've had multiple clutches and I've never got a labyrinth out of them. So I finally found the combination that will give me labyrinths. There were a whole bunch of other labyrinths in the litter. They're all trying to bury, or I should say in the clutch, I'm used to working with boas. But uh, really cool snakes. I just, I like Burmese pythons. I wish they just bit less. They got nasty little bites. Want to look at some yeah. adult berms? Sure, let's do it. All right. All right, now we're gonna look at some larger stuff. Back with some older berms. So most of these animals, I actually had some older ones, but I thought I had some dates on here. I believe these are 2015 animals. So they're seven years old. And I'll show kind of some of my adult female berms. <laughs> I think that a lot of the Burmese pythons we see in the hobby now are way overweight and with a lot of snakes and stuff like that today. But, um, you know, Burmese pythons in general, they don't, I shouldn't say they don't get as big as they, as people think. Uh, I would, I would be able to probably say that, but I mean, this is still a large snake, large constrictor, but this is an adult female. She will get bigger as she gets older, but her growth is somewhat maxed out. I haven't stunted her by feeding her less. I've just fed her the right size males. She lays eggs. She's a healthy female. She is a pearl. So this is a hypomelanistic albino animal. And uh, she is actually, I think, the mother of the clutch we were just looking at. So uh, the clutch we were just looking at is all 100% het albino because she is albino. So this is an adult female. I'll show you another one. She's heavy, though. She's probably maybe 50 pounds. I'm terrible. I never never yeah. weigh things. But this either. is, uh, it's an albino. Let's look at, let's look at albino. I guess she's cool. Uh, and I find that, uh, you know, this is an adult female albino. She's maybe eight or 10 feet or so. She's not very big, but uh, she's fully grown and I hope she doesn't poop on me. She's going into shed. So she's a little bit more defensive than the other one, but she's also het granite. This is that het granite pattern that I was showing, I was talking about. It's more jagged and broken up and um, she smells like pee right now. So I'm gonna put her back. <laughs> she's gonna put herself back. Yeah, she's gonna put herself need back. You. So I guess looking at her, she's probably about nine feet. This is a six foot bin, it's three feet deep and she's got about a foot of her tail hanging over there. So call it 10 foot snake. And, guess to polish it off let's show a uh, a blizzard and this girl has not laid babies for me yet she's been a little bit uh, she was slow to take on to food but the male that I have that is a, a blizzard he is about the same size so just to kind of give you a size reference he's way on the other side of the room and on the top but he's about this size he's maybe a little bit more slender and uh, just a really beautiful snake. I mean, I, I really like ivories in general. I think they're cool. This one again is a blizzard. So this is the red eye version. If you kind of get in close, she is shedding, but I don't know if you can see those eyes, they're red instead of yeah, the black, like we were looking at. Um, I do think that they tend to have, at least this girl here tends to have some vision problems. She doesn't see the food uh, unless I put it right in her face. So she's slow to take to it, but 
She's one of my favorite snakes as well. The first pearl that I pulled out is probably my favorite berm that I have. I've just had her. She's always been a really um, awesome snake, really calm, and she can make a really cool pet for people. A lot of people will disagree that Burmese pythons will make good pets, especially first time pets. I, I made a video on that and it's fine if others disagree. I think as long as you know what you're getting into and you are set up appropriately, you know how big they could get versus how big you hope that they get. And I think they can make good pets. But number one is you need to know what you're getting into. Just like anything, you wouldn't go out and get a dog unless you know what you're gonna get into. Uh, there's large dogs and there's small dogs. And just because it's small doesn't mean it's easier to take care of. Yeah. Sometimes a small snake is way more difficult than a large snake or the other way around. So I think it's important if you're getting into a berm, know what you're getting into. They can make really cool pets. Understand that babies can be a little bit more aggressive and defensive, but as they become adults, they can be really cool. Yeah, for sure. They, they calm down. Once they calm down, they're, they're pretty chill. And then it's just yeah. killing a food response. That's about it. Cause... And honestly, if, I mean, you do blood python. So if yeah. you're looking for something, you're not up to something as large as that. That's just over your capacity. It's a heavy snake. I'm standing here. It's hot in here. I'm yeah. sweating. Yep. Blood python's a perfect compromise. It's like yeah. It's like the boa-sized Burmese python. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, they are. And they can be the same way, too, where the babies can just be really, really, really big douchebags, and then <laughs> they get they get better. But like everything, and I actually have a video coming out soon on that subject with, where people are wondering why their blood is so defensive. Um I'm not sure when I'm going to post it, but it'll be it'll either be out by the time this video is up or coming out soon. But it gets into that, and most of it is how we are working with them, how we are keeping them. Yeah. Very little of it is actually the animal themselves. A lot of it is just how we are approaching and how we are keeping. And when they're content, they're a lot lot easier to work with. Yeah, I've seen sure. some beautiful blood pythons that were amazing. I held one today. I was over uh, Zach's house. He, he comes here. He works. He helps clean some stuff. And awesome T positive blood that was just super chill. Is it a blood yeah. python or yeah. short tail? Yep. I was no, getting those blood messed python. up. I'm not yep. the blood short tail guy, but I yeah. like them. We're going to get you there. Yeah, we're going to get you there. One yeah. day I'll have some. <laughs> and if I get them, they're coming from Dan. There you go. So that was it. I don't know. What do you want? You, yeah. That was it. You want no, to I think that's, else? I think that's good. That's a good little, little short video on some berm. So hopefully uh, you guys jump in the comments, any questions you have. If you haven't checked out Jason's channel, make sure you do. You can see a lot more boa and berm content there for sure. Plus a lot more of Jason. And who doesn't want more of Jason? Right. Know? Right? So uh -huh. we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, guys.